Hi folks, it's the Ghost Saboteur here, and welcome back to the first in the hardware section of the Basics of Teletype series of videos. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at triggers. As you remember from the introduction video, triggers are sent out from four trigger outs on the front panel of the teletype, each numbered one to four. And in programming, when we refer to these trigger outputs, we use the letters T, R. So when we write a command in teletype, and that command is going to ask the teletype to carry out some kind of action, we use a piece of code at the beginning of the command called an operator. An operator is the part of the command that specifies what you want that command to do. So in the case of hardware, the operator TR would have an effect on the trigger outputs. The operator CV, of course, would have an effect on the CV outs. In addition to this, operators are often followed by one or more values, the purpose of which is to give teletype information about what you want that operator to do. In the case of the CV operator, teletype would need to know which CV output you are referring to, and then maybe a value that told the CV out what voltage to send. Of course, we don't just use operators for hardware. There are loads of different operators. Last, drunk, toss, to name a few. I'll leave it to your imagination as to what they do. Needless to say, operators are a very important part of coding the teletype. So let's start by looking at the operators associated with triggers. So first off, we're going to take a look at the TR operator. TR is an operator that allows us to activate and deactivate a trigger output. The command structure for TR is as follows. The first value that TR requires is a value that specifies which output you're targeting. The second value will be either 0 or 1. In the case of 0, this will deactivate the output and set it to 0 volts. In the case of 1, this will activate the output and set it to 10 volts. If you wanted to know what state a specific output was in, you could just type TR followed by the target output number and teletype would return a value of either 0 or 1, off or on. So by way of a quick and dirty example to demonstrate TR, I've set up a quick patch, which is basically the Lequelic Iteritas being fed into the ER301, which has a VCA set up and an ADSR envelope connected to that VCA. The envelope in turn is being triggered by TR1 trigger output from the teletype. So if I was to type TR space 1, the value 1 would represent trigger output 1. If I press space and typed 1, the value 1 would set trigger output on. And in the same way, if I type TR space 1 space 0, the value 0 will switch trigger output 1 off. The TR.TOG operator works in much the same way as the TR operator, but in this case, it toggles the trigger outputs on and off. And more specifically, it toggles them from its current state to the opposite state. TR.TOG requires only one argument, and that's the number of the output you wish to toggle. So for the purposes of demonstrating tr.tog, I have the same example set up uh, as the tr example, except this time, rather than being in live mode, we're now in edit mode, and we're using script1, which is being triggered by Pamela's new workout. So if I was to type tr.tog, and because we're using tr1, or trigger output1 from the teletype, we type the value 1. When we hit return, Pamela's new workout will trigger the script and we'll hear the sound. <laughs> T 
rtr.pulse is an operator that executes a trigger pulse on a specific trigger output. As this operator is used quite extensively when programming the teletype, the writers of the firmware have given us a shortening for this particular operator, and it's shortened to tr.p. As far as the command structure for this operator is concerned, tr.p requires only one argument, and that's the trigger output that you wish to send the pulse. So to demonstrate tr.pulse, we're going to be in Teletypes edit mode again, and we'll be using trigger output 1, 2 and 3 to trigger three different percussion sounds, and we'll be inputting our code into script 1, which will be triggered by PAMS. So for this example, we're going to be using a new bit of code, which is going to be PROB, which stands for probability. We'll cover this later in a video when we talk about randomness. PROB is followed by a value which tells us how much chance there is of an event happening in percent. So in this case, I'm going to use 20, which will be a 20% chance of our trigger firing, trigger number one. I'm going to do the same for trigger number two, but I'm going to give us a 40% chance of the trigger firing this time. And finally, on trigger three, we're going to have an 80% chance of that trigger firing. So when I start PAMS, we'll hear the percussion sounds. The last of the trigger operators I want to take a look at is tr.time. tr.time works together with tr.pulse and sets the length of the trigger pulses in milliseconds. The default length is 100 milliseconds. The command structure for this operator requires that you specify two values, the first of which is the target output, and the second is a value for the pulse length, and this is written in milliseconds. You can also ask Teletype to tell you the length of a pulse on a specified output by using tr.time followed by the number of the output. So for tr.time, we're back in edit mode on Teletype. And for this patch, I've set up a percussion loop. And along with that, I have a bass sound that's being sent constantly out of an oscillator into the ER301 where it's meeting a VCA, and that VCA is being triggered by the teletype from trigger out one. So every time the trigger fires, the VCA will open. And also, every time the trigger fires, we'll be changing the length of that trigger using tr.time. So here's the code. We start by typing tr.time. We want to trigger trigger output one, so one. And then we're going to use a bit of code, which you don't need to worry too much about. We'll be covering it in future videos. And it's rrand. And what rrand does is sends out a random value within a range. And for this, our range is going to be between 50 and 200. We'll hit return and add that to the script. And if you remember, tr.time works with values in milliseconds. So that random range is going to give us a value between 50 and 200 milliseconds every time the script is triggered. So all we need to do is add tr.p, I'm using the shortened version, space 1 to trigger output 1, hit return, add it to the script, and press play on PAMS. I really hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe. Any support really helps and is much appreciated. From this point on, I'm going to try and make all future videos about this length, the idea of which is that people can just dip in and out and use it as more of a reference. Also, let me know if there's anything you would like me to cover in future videos. I absolutely look forward to reading any comments that people leave. Thanks again, and see you next time. Cheers!